وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد Inshallah ta'ala today it's going to be uh, it's going to be the second today inshallah ta'ala is going to be our second lesson for how to save your family from the hellfire inshallah ta'ala we spoke about some points yesterday and now inshallah ta'ala today we're going to move on to the second point we're going to move on to the second lesson. Point number three. Point number three. And this point number three is how to protect your family from the hellfire. We mentioned that the first one was uh, giving consideration to educating them. The book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and whatever is important for them regarding their religion and even aiding them in their worldly affairs. Number two, we spoke about um, looking over them and following up their, their establishing of the obligatory acts. And inshallah ta'ala today, we're going to go on to the third one, which is giving great importance to and a great in consideration with what? بِالتَّرْبِيَةِ التَّعَبُّدِيَةِ Your family's ibadah and their prayer and their voluntary deeds. Here we're talking about ibadat which are sunan and nawafil, voluntary acts. So it, the second one was talking about the obligatory things. Here you give a lot of importance on cultivating your family. Upon what? Ibadat that are voluntary. This is very important. And the reason why you do this is because you want to raf'il mustawa. You want to raise the station and the position of your family. It's not enough that you just overlook their ada'ul fara'id, that they only do the obligatory things. It's important as well that your family are also coming with voluntary things that you're also trying to make sure that they do that as well and you're urging them and you're pushing them towards that direction the reason is because brothers and sisters is that the voluntary act is a um, shield before the abandoning of the obligatory act if your family members are doing nawafil and sunan will they leave the wajibat Will they leave Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, Fajr? First of all, they have to leave Qiyamul Layl first. They have to leave the Sunan al-Rawatib first. They would have to leave the voluntary prayers first. If they succeed in leaving the voluntary prayers, you come back and you urge them to pray the voluntary prayers. So you will never get to a point with your family where you would have to speak to them about things that are obligatory. Because the discussion is always going to be about what? Recently, I haven't seen you pray the voluntary acts. And if you look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to do this with his family. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, Kana Rasulullah, the message of Allah was, Ida dakhal al-ashara, if the last 10 days of Ramadan would enter, ahya al-layla, he would give life to those lights. In other words, he would revive those nights. Wa ayqadha ahlahu, and he would wake up his family. He would wake up his wife. He would wake up his families, family alayhi salatu wasalam. Wajadda, 
And the Prophet وسلم, would work very hard. And the Prophet وسلم, would tie his waist. Meaning he would abandon his wives. He would have no intimate relation mm -hmm. with them. He would go for i'tikaf. He would seclude himself in the masjid. But he would wake up his family. And he would tell them that they need to wake up and benefit from this opportunity. So he would teach them these voluntary acts. And he would push them towards the alayhi salatu wasalam. Umm Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, and then Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam istayqadha laylatan. One night the Prophet woke up. Faqala he said, Subhanallah, exalted is Allah. Mada anzal Allahu laylata min al fitna. Wa as Allah sent down today trials and tribulations, he sent down. Mada anzal min al khazain. And also, the Allah has sent down today khazain. He has sent down treasures. So Allah sent down fitna. And he also sent down what? Khazain. Treasures and good. May you kidu sawahim il hujurat. Who is going to wake up? Uh, my wives. He's referring to sawahim il hujurat. He means yani as wajihina. The Prophet is talking about his wives. As wajuhu, he's talking about his wives. Alayhi salatu salam. Who's going to wake them up? So he realized and he knew alayhi salatu salam how important it was that they woke up at night. ولذلك عائشة سيد أز بخاري مسلم ريتد كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يصلي من الليل. The Prophet used to pray at night. فإذا أوتر قال if he done his witr he would say he would say to her قومي فأوتر يا عائشة عائشة stand up wake up and do your witr. He told her to witr. عليه الصلاة والسلام. He also said رحم الله رجلا قام من الليل ما الله حب ماسي upon a man who woke up at night فصلى and he prayed وأي قض مرأته and he woke up his wife فصلت she prayed with him فإن أبت نض نضح في وجهها if he refuses he takes water sprinkles of water he takes it نضح في وجهها he sprinkles those water on her face and then the Prophet said, رحم الله امرأة May Allah have mercy upon a woman. قامت من الليل She stood up at night. فصلت She prayed. وأيقظت زوجها She woke up her husband. فصلى He prays. فإن أبا If he doesn't choose to pray. نضحت في وجهه الماء She sprinkles water in his face. Sprinkles, not pours water. She sprinkles water on his face. Or he sprinkles water on her face. It's a family, they wake each other up for Qiyamul Layl, the portion of the night, they pray together. Look at these people, what do they attain? Rahim Allah. The Prophet said, may Allah have rahmah on that family. And may Allah have rahmah on that household. So whose dua are they going to receive? Dua of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But imagine you have a family who the husband and the wife, the whole night they're spending what? Sleeping. Or some of them even worse, they're gossiping, talking, backbiting, speaking about other people's a'rab, other people's honors. And we're going to speak about that. What kind of tarbiyah is that man giving to his family? What kind of tarbiyah is a man giving to his family? If your wife sees you and you're meant to be the practicing one in the family, but all night you are in the position that you are in, as in sleeping, you haven't moved from this place. Abi Wa'ilin, he said, one early morning we went to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. Abi Wa'ilin, he said, one early morning we went to Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. After we prayed our Fajr prayer. فَسَلَّمْنَا بِالْبَابِ We knocked on the door, we stayed in front of the door, and then permission was given to us to come in. فَمَكَثْنَا We stayed at the door a little bit. فَخَرَجَتِ الْجَارِيَةِ The slave girl came out. فَقَالَ She said, أَلَا تَدْخُلُونَ Are you not going to enter? You've been given permission. Why don't you enter? فَدَخَلْنَا We entered. فَإِذَا هُوَ جَالِسٌ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بْنُ مَسْعُودِ was sitting down. يُسَبِّحُ He was doing Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. فَقَالَ He said to us, مَا مَنَعَكُمْ أَنْ تَدْخُلُوا What is it that stopped you from entering into the house? What was stopping you 
for come, from coming in. وَقَدْ أَذِنَ لَكُمْ Permission was given to you. فَقُلْنَا We said to him, No. إِلَّا أَنَّا إِلَّا أَنَّا إِكْسَبْ ظَنَنَّا أَنَّ بَعْضَ أَهْلِ الْبَيْتِ الْنَائِمُونَ we only thought maybe some of the family members are sleeping. قال عبد الله بن مسعود said, ظننتم, you thought, بآل ابن عبد, أم عبد, you thought about the family of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, غفلة, a heedless family members, you thought Abdullah ibn Mas'ud's family members are people who are heedless, ثم أقبل يسبح, then he went back to his tasbih, حتى ظن أن الشمس قد طلعت, until he started to think, that the sun rose, so he said to the jariya, فقال يا جاريا, انظري هل اطلعت? He goes to the slave, go check, is the sun out? So the sunrise. So she went and she looked. She came back and she said to him, no, it hasn't risen. And they went back to his tasbih. And then he went to go check, has the sun risen? She went and she looked, and it has risen. And then he said, Alhamdulillah, الذي Praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has woken us up and brought us to life and he didn't destroy us based on our sins. And Imam al we commented on this and he said, وَفِي هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ In this hadith is مُرَعَاتِ الرَّجُلِ That a man observes لِأَهْلِ بَيْتِهِ his family وَرَعِيَتِهِ And those he has leadership over في أمور دينهم in their religious matters. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is saying my family are not a heedless family. And no, he knows his family. He what? He knows his family. He knows them. And he's the one who wakes them up. And he's the one who observes their situation. Radiallahu <laughs> ta'ala anhu. The fourth point of how to protect your family from the hellfire is to nurture them upon al akhlaq al hamida, good etiquette, good manners from them being shyness and being chast. You nurture your family upon this. Mujahidin rahimahullah, what did he say? Usiikum. He say, I advise you, myself and all of you, and your families, bi taqwallahi, the piety of Allah. And I advise those who have leadership over those who they have leadership over, to discipline them. Discipline them here means nurture them upon what? Al akhlaq al hamida. That you nurture them upon good manners and good etiquette. This is a job of the an individual when it comes to his household. Your brothers, your sisters, you teach them good manners and good akhlaq. You work on this. It's kasidq, like being truth, truthful. Al amana, the person is trustworthy. The person has is a diligent person, a ta'anni, don't hasten to things, just be calm. Wait, wait, think about it first. He teaches his family members at tawadu, be humble. Al haya, be shy. And he also teaches them how to deal with adults. The neighbors, the family members, friends, all of this he observes. The man should observe his wife's statements, the things that she says. He observes her kalibat. He observes yuraqibu lisan. He observes the things that she says, the speeches that come out of her mouth. Hatta la taqa'u fil ghibati wa nabima. So she doesn't fall into backbiting and slandering and causing loved ones to hate one another. She doesn't come with forbearing. Uh, what do you, she doesn't come with tail bearing and backbiting. You're nurturing your family upon this. It is sad that you see a person who's a student of knowledge or who's meant to be a student of knowledge sitting down with his wife and gossiping about other people, backbiting other individuals, talking about other people's a'rad honors. This person, forget him, saying this to your family. What kind of tarbiyah and what kind of cultivation are you giving your family members? Your children are looking at you. The mother is learning from you. She's learning this from you. So a man should not teach his family this at all. He shouldn't speak to his family about anyone. A man should not speak to his wives and his children about other people. Leave it off. Don't talk to them about 
other people's honors. Don't talk to them about what other people are good and bad at. That's something you don't bring to your house. You don't talk about these issues. And people who do do that later can't stop their family from going into more detailed gossips and go into more tale bearing because you set the you set the mark. You've allowed this to come into your house. So it is something to be embarrassed about when you do do that. And then what happens? Your wife goes to another woman and then tells what you told her. Wallahi, this is something to be embarrassed about. And this is something that is disgusting. Especially when the person is meant to be a what? Talibu ilm. Student of knowledge. Stay away from backbiting and namima, tell barons. Your family should have nothing to do, your family should have nothing to do with other people's problems. Who gave you responsibility over it? Who made you deal with these issues? The place, this environment that you make for you in the house, brothers, is an environment where it's salih, it's righteous, khair, ibadah, knowledge is taught. You also separate your family from ikhtilaat bighayrihinna, free mixing. If you're the first one to free mix and to sit with women alone in a room and lock yourself in there, then when your wife goes and she locks herself in a room with the men, who are you blaming? You're teaching this akhlaq and these manners and these issues. Also the man should stop from the ways that you need to teach your family is that you don't allow people who are evil to come into the house. Sometimes you might be building your family members and nurturing them and teaching them the important etiquettes that they need. But guess what? Somebody who inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un who has open tongue, vulgar speech will come in and will change everything you were speaking about. And as you all know, the poet said, وَمَتَى يَبْلُغُ الْبُنْيَانُ تَمَامَهُ إِذَا كُنْتَ تَبْنِيهِ وَغَيْرُكَ يَهْدِمُهُ When is a building going to become complete? If you're building it, you're working on it, you're putting so much effort in it, and right at the bottom, somebody's just taking the bricks out. Somebody's taking the bricks out. And that's what happens. When you bring people who are not righteous into the household, they play their role in destroying everything. That's what they do. You lessen on women coming to your house too much. Because the women, Without a doubt, women are excessive in speech. Except those who Allah have mercy upon. The majority of women, if they sit together, they have to talk. They have to gossip. So you restrict that and you cut down on that. Whether it be your mother, you tell her mom to cut down on these women that are coming to the house and she's visiting and they're visiting her and they're seeing too much. You try to cut down on that. And we're going to speak about when you do try to cut down on those things, you need to remember what? What is it that you need to remember? You need to remember you have to play that role now. You can't just leave that empty vacuum. You can't just leave it like that. And no one's, no one's going to take her time. The mother wants to talk. So you place things for her. The same is with the father. He's maybe talking to men who are talking to him about things that I have no la silat bil Islam. And your father is growing old now. Has grown old. All he awaits for is death. You don't want him to spend the rest of his, whatever is left from, from his life, spending it in gossiping and talking and whatnot. And even speaking about things that are nonsense. So what do you do? You dismiss these individuals that are around him and get away. Because brothers, you can't bring about good whilst there's evil there. If there's people who are blowing into the family, there's no benefit you giving lectures and durus and these individuals need to be, first of all, either reduced or fully eliminated from coming to the house. It's important because there's always a person that the parents generally listen to. So, and that person will just say one thing and get your family to do everything. So you try to get rid of these people who are doing this. Also from the important etiquette that a man should bring to the attention of his family or the woman should bring to her family is that the importance of time. This is a, a concept that you need to teach. You need to teach your wife to value time. The wife needs to teach her husband and speak to him about valuing his time if she feels he's always on social media, he's always playing around, he's always uh, 
out and about in restaurants. If she sees that from him, she needs to talk to him about al ihtibam bil muhafadati ala al waqt, giving importance to time. This is a concept that you have to teach. Because a lot of the things that happen, the basis for it is that either the parents or the children, they don't value time. There's no value of time. So the person believes that they are killing time, but really time is killing you. Time is what? It's killing you. You, you are just time that came together. And as time goes on, you're going to die. You find that due to not honoring time and, wanting, and wasting time, you see that some women, they spend so much time on the phone, chatting, because they don't see the value of time. They're talking on the phone and they're speaking on it for so long. Sometimes you even hear them say, oh, it's too, so hot, let me just put the phone down. Because of the fact how, how long they've been speaking on it. And if you listen to it, sometimes what they are talking about, wallah, you find there's no fa'idah in it, there was no benefit in it, there's nothing khayr that they're mentioning. إِذَنْ فَعَلَ الدَّاعِيَةِ أي دَاعِي أي طالب علم أي person who's practicing He has to guide his family to what? لِقِيمَةِ الْوَقْتِ The importance of time and the value of time and what time actually means. Also from the good etiquette is that a man nurtures his family in how to speak to a foreigner. You have sisters, you have wives, your mother, you need to teach her, you need to teach them كَيْفِيَةُ مُحَادَثَةِ الرِّجَالِ الْأَجَالِمِ How should they talk to men? How should they deal with men? A lot of these women and these girls, when you look at them, their parents have never spoken to them about these issues. So a lot of them are shy. But when they come in contact with a man, the way that they speak is not good. She's a shy girl, she's quiet as a, to a level. But then when she does talk, she doesn't know the way to carry herself. What she should say and when she should draw the line and leave. She hasn't been taught this. Okay, nobody's ever spoken to her about it. Nobody's brought it to her attention. Your sister, your daughter, your mother. So what you teach your family members is how to speak to the opposite gender. You teach them this. And the manners that they should, they should, that they should speak. And laughing and joking with the opposite gender freely like that. Something if you should tell your family to cut down on and leave this. And if they speak to them, that they're speaking to them based on the necessity and what is needed and not more than that and beyond that. This is the etiquette that you're nurturing your family upon. Also, when your wives or your daughters, they, and also the opposite is the truth. If a wife sees her husband is speaking free, she needs to speak to him about this issue of the opposite gender and how he is in that regard. And his dealings in that particular matter. The wife should what? She speak to her husband about it. And if she feels he doesn't know it, then she should write for him and educate him with practical steps that he needs to take. And the masail pertaining to that. This is something that everybody should play in their household. Also, the person should observe the way that your family members leave the house, whether it be your brothers, or whether it be your sisters, or whether it be your mother, or your father, it doesn't matter. Observing your family members, how they leave the house, and when they leave the house, you observe that. Especially women when they go to weddings, you observe that situation. Because that type of place, it is rare, it's a little, that al-munkarat, evil doesn't take place. A lot of the times, People become very lackadaisical in that regard. They become very negligent, to be honest. And they take the matter very lightly. And so sometimes, some women actually believe on the wedding day that you're allowed to leave your house with your what? The way that, the way that you be beautified. No. You have to cover yourself from the destination and from your departure. You're leaving from your house and you're dressed like this. When you leave your house, you have to cover yourself. You have to what? You have to cover yourself. You also have to remember that using perfume is not allowed. So if you go there and you use perfume and then you take an Uber or you take a whatever you do, all of this has to be something that the uh, husband or the father observes. When it comes to his daughters or his parents, his mother, 
his wife, his sisters, these are things that he has to observe. He looks at his sister's hijab, he educates her and he talks to her about this, he takes time out to make her know what the hijab is or what is it, what is it not. What does it actually mean? What is it Allah wants the women to look like? The same with your brothers. You teach them about the libasu, the clothing of the man. What is it that he needs to wear? What is it that he can't wear? How should he not dress? How long and the length of his garment? How long should it be? The man takes time out. The wife takes time out for her husband to tell him these things. These are things that we all have to observe in our households. We all have to observe in our households. And what we have to remember is that the Prophet ﷺ was like that when he came to his family. He would observe the things that they would do. He would observe ﷺ their implementation of these issues. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, the fact that the Prophet would be jealous if his family went against Allah's prohibitions. He would be jealous if his wife would go out and do something. The Prophet would be very jealous. Aisha narrated, رضي الله تعالى عنها أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم دخل عليها. The Prophet entered onto Aisha. وعندها رجل أيمان was with Aisha. قاعد sitting. قالت فاشتد ذلك عليه. This matter became very tough on the Prophet. He became upset and angry. ورأيت الغضب في وجهه. And Aisha said, I saw the anger on his face. How angry he was. He فقلت I said يا رسول الله إنه أخي من الرضاعة. Oh Prophet of Allah, this is my brother. From the breastfeeding. Qalat Fakala the Prophet then said, He said to Aisha, Look at your brothers from Rada'ah. Look at them, observe them. Fa inna mar Rada'atu bil al Majama'ah. Fa inna mar Rada'atu min al Majama'ati. That breastfeeding that makes this person your brother is when it reaches Majama'ah. The milk has to fill the person. It's not a sip from the breastfeeding, mere milk. So look at who you take as a brother. It's not just a mere breastfeeding. The breastfeeding has, a, has an amount. Has a what? Has an amount. In other words, this person has been breastfed with you. Like it's not what? It's not the amount. It's not the correct amount. Ridanika, Al Imam, Al Nawi, and others, they mentioned. He was saying to her, قبل أن تدخلنا رجلا before you enter onto a uh, or you enter, bring a man into the house, okay, uh, and you consider him to be from your brothers. Look at هل وقعت الرضاعة في وقت التأثير? Did the breastfeeding reach the amount that would affect, that would make this person your brother? Huh? Or did it f take place still outside, meaning he's still not your brother? Look at that and observe that. It's not just a mere best feeling. So this is very important. This is what? It's very important. This shows us what? The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would be he had ghira for his family. He wouldn't let his wife just stay with a man. And some of us, or some people, they have in them, they have in them Adam al ghira No ghira He would take his daughter to a place of dancing and he'll drop his daughter off to a club. He'll drop his daughter to a club and he would let her go out with boys. He would allow his daughter to live in the university, the university campus and he says he could stay there. Knowing all of the fitan and the sharr that takes place in that university campus. Who, what, what father would do that? Who has iman in his heart? Adam al there's no ghira anymore. That's a problem. Point number five, to prevent your families from uh, the hellfire is تحذير الأهل من خطر من خطر المجرمين وطرقهم. That you warn your family from the path of the criminals and the wrongdoers. You, you, you warn your family from them and the path that these people take. Because you study these individuals and their plots and their plans you need to warn your family. It's not enough, brothers, that you educate and you teach. Warning has to be done. Because our messengers, Risala, what it was about? Rusulan, Mubashirina, wa Mudirina. He gave glad tidings and he warned. So you need to warn. Warn them from what? 
Allah says in the Quran, وَكَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ وَلِتَسْتَبِينَ سَبِيلُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ وَكَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ And Allah says, like that, we explain the verses. And then look what he said after that. وَكَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ وَلِتَسْتَبِينَ سَبِيلُ الْمُجْرِمِينَ So the path of the criminals can become clear. The believer should not, he should know the path of the criminals, what they are upon. You need to warn your family about the dangers of those who are plotting against them and what they want to attain. For instance, when it comes to the women, the enemies are approaching the women from two angles. Okay, they're approaching them from two angles. The first one is the concept which they're trying to call freedom, liberation of women. That they're trying to liberate the women. And what are they trying to attain from liberating the women? hijabi. Take off your hijab. Go outside the house. Enjoy yourself. Do what you, what you want. And they want, what do they want from this? This is what they call this is what they call liberation. We call it worshipping your desires. It's actually slavery. It's actually what? Harabu min al الَّذِي خُلِقُوا لَهُ فَبُلُوا فَبُلُوا بِرِقِّ النَّفْسِ وَالشَّيْطَانِ That they refuse to be slaves of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who did they become slaves for? Their nafs and shaytan. So what they want you to do is stop being a slave of Allah and be, be a slave of shaytan and your nafs. So that's the first um, approach that they take to misguide. The second approach that they take is they want to destroy the Muslim community. They want to destroy the number of Muslims. So they call to what is known as Tahdeedul Nas. They say to the woman, have a child or two. Uh, just one, or one kid, two kids. That's more than enough. Get yourself a job. So what do they want from this? Taqreer Afaradil Ummat al Islamiyah. They want to reduce the number of the what? They want to reduce the number of Muslims. And it becomes less and less and less. Because they realize the message of Islam it is going to what? مشارق الأرض ومغاربها. They see that's taking place. So what do, they, what do they want to do? They want to make sure that if they can't fully battle with that, they can at least what? They can fight with. That they can fight with the amount of Muslims. So these two are taking place. تحرير المرأة. Liberation of women. That's, that's the first call that they go to. And the second one is Tahdeedul Nasri, restricting the offspring and the children that you have. Walidalika, today, if you sit with many of the Muslims, those two da, those two illnesses has fallen into them. Sah? The woman will say to you, I want to have a kid or two. Yes, khalas, the amr. Da? The man will say that to you. Ah, forget the woman. And the second is Tahrirul Mar'a, liberation. Ah. Do you know why they want liberation of the women? Oh, uh, as they call it, Allah is not liberation. But what do they want? Ya yeah, I ask you a question. Five people are sitting together. Four people talk and they say everything. There's this one person who doesn't talk. He's quiet, he's listening. Isn't everyone going to turn and ask themselves, what's this brother, why doesn't he talk? We're all talking. Huh? And wouldn't everybody here put effort in making sure that he speaks and he says, we've all spoken about our lives, we all told her where we live. We, you're the quiet one. What, what are you up to? The kuffar, they brought their women out. Their women out on the streets, doing everything. Fahsha and munkarat. That's what they did, right? We Muslims chose, no, 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 our women are going to stay at home, inshaAllah ta'ala. So what do they want to do? They want us to bring out their women. Our women, just like they. Hey, let's see your woman. We want to see her. So they brought this concept of at-tahrir. Ladalika brothers, I'll say something to you. If you look at this concept of women, women's liber liberation movement, when it first came out, and you observe it and you look at it, it came out after World War II. When the men went to fight, okay, and the men were busy with fighting for British values, صح? what happened? Who was remaining? The woman. But the government, majority, and a large amount of the men have gone, soldiers, they're in the army. So the women were told, okay, you have to work now. The government requires for you to work. 
So the government saw that the women working for the first time. They seen women working. So what happened? The men came back. Government realized if the men come back, what are they going to want? They're going to want their women to stay at home because that's where they were. And that the men are want to the men are want to they will want to go out and work. So the government thought, how could we make both parties work? The men and the and the woman. So what they did was they called out to women's rights. Men want to oppress you. Men want to wrong you. Men, like in the government, doesn't care about the man, nor does it care about the woman. It just cares about the tax and the money. The women, they work for less. Their work ethics are actually better than the men. And the money that is given is less. Are we together? So to make them work, and to make the men work, both, the government will do everything because this is something to do with the tax and the government. If you look at this government, it doesn't tax big companies like Starbucks, and uh, Costa and Sainsbury's. And it doesn't tax them. The real money that the government looks at is the workers. The tax that it takes from it. These companies are what employ the people. They're what employ the people. So these companies shouldn't be given a hard time. They should be actually told, come into the country. Come into the country. That is made easy for them. But like in, what the government has to do is push the people into the working sector and make the overwhelming majority of people work so the government gets taxed. This is the money that the government needs. It needs it. So when you come and you say, women, stay at home. What do you do to the government? So they have to call you an extremist. They have to make the women give you a hard time. But that's the reality, wallahi. They don't care about their own people. Wallahi, they don't. Nor do they care about anyone. They only care about their system and the government cares about its money. Halas. So pay attention to that. And subhanAllah, me and a group of brothers, we sat down. We looked at the, the basic, the minimum salary that women take. And if a husband and a wife, both of them go out and work. Ya ikhwa, wallahi, what is left over for what is being exerted in is nothing. Well, look what the kuffar did to their people. What did they do to them? They made them work. So when they made them work, and they've been forced to work, and that has become normalized for them, the woman is being, then she, in front of her there's a what? There's in front of her the choice of having children or not. And she knows if she has one child, she has one child, the money that she makes, the savings, everything, no, she can't do it. So you're going to always realize these two are together. Liberation of women and the issue of having children. I remember one time I was driving LBC, a woman called in, she's like, I had to choose between whether me and my partner wanted to have children or whether I pay for my, my mortgage. You see? And now I, I made my decision and I'm not going to. Huh? I'm not going to have children. I'm going to take care of my mortgage. She's going to die. She probably may not finish her mortgage. Mortgage 50, 60 years. Ya ikhwa. She might die. The bank might take that. That woman, she's what? Nasiyan mansiyan. No one remembers her, she, whether she existed or not. That's how it is. They just enslaving the people. What liberation have they put them through? Where's the hurriya? A woman who's waking up every day, running after her mortgage. Billahi alaykum. She can't think. She can't have her own children. She can't have a life. She's running to make a mortgage just to pay it. And every month, when they pay their mortgage, they can think about what they're going to eat. They have to pay the mortgage first. Then they can think about what they want to eat. What hurriya have you brought these people? What freedom have you brought them? You're using them. You're eating these people's blood. So, harabu min al ladi khuliqu lahu. Are we together? Number six. حفظ البيوت من المنكرات. حفظ البيوت من المنكرات. Saving your household from the evil. This is important, brothers. Again, we have to observe what comes into the house. Some of our parents, they don't leave the houses a lot, huh? They don't leave the houses a lot. But the kuffar already thought of this. What did they think of? They thought of going to continents with our armies. Ya Ikhwan, no more are the West ever thinking about intervention uh, and deploying troops into countries. 
have means to get to that society and that community and those people by not having to be there. They've got social media outlets. So they'll, make, they'll bring things to your house, your household. Your family are in a Muslim country, they've never come into contact with any kafir mathalan. But every single thing, uh, drop by drop, has been brought to them. Sah? In that house, in a Muslim country, never went to the kuffar, never seen a kafir. But in that place, they believe everything. They're in contact with the kuffar. How did that happen? Hifdul buyuti min al Saving the household from evil brothers and sisters. If you look at the evil that are in the houses today, in many of the Muslim people, you can categorize it into three. It, you can't take it outside these three. Number one, munkarat which are khasa, evil that are specific, birabbil manzil, it is specific to what? The uh, father or the leader of the house, the leader of the house. He's, he's the one, it's a specific type of munkar. He's the one who's bringing the munkar himself. He's actually, he's the one who's doing it. Like for example, smoking, drinking, um, and etc. He's up to no good. So what is happening is that the children are looking at their father and he's bringing evil to the household. But in that case, one of the sad things is that a child comes, I remember the times when I used to teach at the madrasa. I used to teach at the Quran madrasa. A child will tell you, my dad drinks. So you will try to give him husnul run. Say, look, maybe he's drinking. No, he doesn't drink alcohol. Maybe he No, I know it. The kids, are seven of them were seven, eight years old. They know it. But the father kicks them out of the room, locks the door. You think the kids don't know? Wallahi, they know. They know it. So they understand what he's up to. Six, seven years old, eight years the kid will tell you that my dad does this, my mom does this. Are we together? But that because some of the stories that were transmitted from the Arab countries was that a son came to Madrasa, he came to the teacher. And he said to the teacher, he said to the teacher, my dad does what he does with the maid, what mom does with the driver. My mom, my dad does with the maid what my mother does with the driver. And that kid doesn't know what's happening. He knows, of course, he can see what's taking place. So the munkar here is specifically brought by who? It's specifically brought by the leader and the person in charge of the house is actually bringing the evil. He's doing the evil. The people in authority. You are bringing the evil to the house. What are you doing? You're bringing evil to the house. That's one type of evil that are brought to the houses. The second type of evil that is brought to the house is this type is specific to the children and the women. It's bringing them television. Different things that are um, allowing your children to watch cartoons. Okay, You provide them with mobile phones unrestrictedly. You allow your children to watch uh, you allow your children to watch cartoons. And the cartoons are what brothers? And sisters, cartoons that involve magic, magicians. So the magic, the magician, what is he doing? And ma magic is what, brothers? Kufru billahi al al azim. Is this belief of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sah? Who, you know, back in the days, magic was a witch. No long nose, nails, ugly. You just wouldn't like her, right? But then what they did is they thought they brought Harry Potter, a young boy. Yeah, ha skin Harry, yeah. And then that's it. The kid is reading. The Philosopher's Stone, the Chambers of Secret, huh? He reads these books, he goes through them, he watches the, the movie, he watches cartoons that involve magic. The cartoon, well, lies magic. Like the magician is fighting with who? The magician is fighting with the evildoers. He's saving people. That's what the way the kid sees it. So it's a hero. So whose side is he on? The kid, when he's watching the cartoon, or when he's reading the book, he's on the side of the magician. He's on the side of the magician. This is the little kids. Music is being sung in the back. And Allah says to us in the Quran, وَاسْتَفْزِزْ مَنِ اسْتَطَعْتَ مِنْهُمْ بِصَوْتِكَ وَأَجْلِبْ عَلَيْهِ بِخَيْلِكَ وَرَجِكَ وَشَارِكُمْ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ The Kufar, they put music in there. And then in that ayah, what does shaitan do with his voice? Because music is whose voice? It's the shaitan's voice. Allah says, وَشَارِكُمْ فِي الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَوْلَادِ 
He's participating with you in your wealth and your children. So the child is memorizing music, lyrics are coming to him, and etc. And this is Umul Khaba'ith Wallahi from the sources of evil. It's from the sources of evil. So this is what's taking place. The man provides his family with these issues. He what? He provides his family with these issues. The third type is Mukarat al Mujtaba'. The third type is Al Mukarat al Mujtaba' Al Mutasalila to Ilabuyutina. The third type is evil that is in the community but it's creeping into your household. The evil is not within the house, but it's coming from outside within. And you're not making for it a strong fortress. So the evil comes to the house. It comes what? It comes through the house. For example, the people, they go out on the streets, they come back and they see what they see in uh, the streets. They go to Madrasa. They go to what? They go to Madrasa. They go to schools. They go to other places. So what do they do? They see things. With Alika, one of the things I told you this is my father took us to a madrasa for one time, a period of time. He took us to a madrasa. Yeah, this is 1993, 94. Early age. Huh? Who was born in 94? I love you, I'm born, right? This time, we're going to madrasa, we're learning. My dad took us it. Maybe we were there for a month or so. Then my dad took us out. He said, the madrasa destroys my children. See, the less. So he brought a Quran teacher to the house. Ya ikhwa, you work towards bringing things to the house. Not taking your, out, your family members out as much. You keep them in within. Because what's happening outside, is going to destroy you. Children are learning bad things from madrasas. That's what they're learning from it. Also, what my father used to do is before we used to go to school in the morning, before we go to school, my dad would sit with us. Before we went to school, he would sit with us, he would give us overall advice, he would tell us about Imaniyat, we go to school. When we came back, he would be waiting for us. Or a Quran teacher was at home, he would be there, one of the two. So in the morning before you go, he's the one who tells you what, it's, what it is, what it is, it, what is it not. Because you know your family are now going to have to go outside to the outside world. They're going to see so much things. Let you be the first person to get to their minds and tell them what it is and what is it, what is it not. And then in the evening when they come back from school, when they come back from school, you automatically have a Quran teacher for them, waiting for them. Or you have somebody, a teacher that's going to teach them. Brothers, pay attention to this, Wallahi. What happens? You've now worked on making sure what takes place on the streets don't come into the house. It won't happen. What's taking place on the streets will not come into the house. Look what Allah said about Nabi Allah Lord. Lord's people, what were they? Homosexuals. Lord, what did he say to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala? He said, Rabbi Najini, O Allah, oh Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, protect me from what? Wa ahli, my family, mimma ya'maluna, what these people are doing. Allah, protect me and my family from what these people are doing. Don't ever think to yourself that being in a community and your house can be a what? A hub of khair. If you're in a community that's destroyed, the chances of it coming into your house is very high. Is what? It's very high. So what did Allah wa ta'ala tell us in that verse? That Nabiullah Lord had to say, Rabbi Najini, oh Allah protect me. Wa ahli and my family, mimma ya'maloon. Mimma ya'maloon. And then what, what did Allah tell us? فَنَجَّيْنَاهُ وَأَهْلَهُ أَجْمَعِينَ إِلَّا عَجُوزًا فِي الْغَابِرِينَ Allah tells us that He protected Nabiullah Lord. He protected him. And his family, all of them, except his wife. Because his wife was what? She was كَانَتْ عَلَى دِينِ قَوْمِهَا She was upon the religion of her people. She was a disbeliever. Okay? She was a what? He, she was a disbeliever. One thing you need to remember, brothers, is that prophets... Wives can never, ever be, cannot come with things that go against chastity. It's impossible. Every Anbiya and every Rusul, their wives were chast. Are we, are we together? Never can zina happen from them. Uh, does that make sense? Like in Kufr, it could happen. Kufr could happen. But they were Tahirat. Bahirat from this angle of what? Not having 
a moral act. They won't do that. Prophets, messengers, no. So look, Allah Taala accepted the du'a of Nabi Allah, Lord. So you make du'a for your children and your family members. A wife makes du'a for her husband. Allah protects him, Subhanahu wa Taala. It's sad because a man will push his wife to go out and work. This is a reality. You make your wife go out and work, and your wife goes and she works and she works and she's working in a place where other opposite genders are there. So what's happening? Your wife is talking to another opposite gender. She's chatting with another person from another gender, and etc. And as you're probably not giving her a good, you're probably working. You're tired yourself. So when you both come home, what well, you're, you're what? You're tired. You can't do much. Uh, give time because you've been working all day, and you haven't had that time together. But this man, he pours her tea. He brings it to her to the table. Khalas. He leaves her. And her heart becomes attached to a man other than you. These are not things that don't happen. Do they happen? They happen on a large scale. If only you saw the inbox, you'd be shocked. They happen. What was it that was upon the person to do? Yeah, keep your wife at home. Uh, just keep your family at home. Keep everything out. Lesson on going outside. Lesson on going outside. Stop it. Reduce it. Let it be all khair and good in the house, majority of the times. I'll stop there, inshaAllah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and His Messenger are free from it. Subhanakallah wa bihamdika, ashadu wa la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.